welcome friends the most important distribution which we call normal distribution or the Gaussian distribution I want to share some of my understanding with you about this distribution it is very common very useful sometimes we use it as an approximation method even for some of the discrete probability distributions like binomial distribution. The only the thing with the normal distribution is important that is their basic characteristics. The first characteristics which we assume is its shape. It is called as normal distribution when the data which we convert into the histogram shows a kind of nature similar to the bell. If it is a bell shaped curve we call it close to the normal distribution. But there are certain conditions on which we justify the data is normally distributed. How do we justify? This is the reason. The first criteria there is mean, mode, medians must be equal. If mean is equal to the median, it shows that it is symmetrical about mean. If mode is equal to mean, then it will clarify that the maximum frequency of occurrence is at the mean value of the variable. Whether it is the diameter of a bottle being manufactured, it may be a distance thrown of the ball in a score, it may be the timings of the runners on an average achieved, it can be the surface finish of the glass which is being manufactured, or anything else, any parameter that is continuous in nature can be dealt with normal distribution if the data obtained uh, is showing us a kind of bell nature and a characteristics where mean mode medians are almost equal. Second, third thing is there that the relationship of mean with respect to the standard deviation. As we already know, what is standard deviation? So, in the case of uh, normal distribution, if the mean value, which we have a mean over here, shows a spread of the data for mean minus standard deviation and mean plus standard deviation of about 67% of the possibility. Or when the spread of data is for two means, the possibility is 97. If the spread of the data is for three means, it is 99.7. So in that case, the distribution is supposed to be a normal distribution. Now what is the normal distribution? This function fx defines the notation for normal distribution where two parameters are constant for a particular normal distribution one is mean and the other is variance this x is the variable which is called as continuous random variable the value of x is over this curve for a perspective value of mean and a variance now this is a standard distribution if it is showing that 65 or approximately 66 percent of the data falls between mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma limits and if for two sigma limits it will be about 95 percent this will be and for three sigma limits it will be about 99.7 then only we call this distribution as normal distribution. Now this is the equation for normal distribution which defines the probability fx which is equal to this function 1 upon 2 mu pi sigma e to the power minus 1 upon 2 sigma square x minus mu square for the values of x ranging from minus infinity 
Now, if suppose we have to find out the probability for the occurrence of x between x1 and x2. In this case, we have nothing but an option to integrate this function fx over the range of x1 to x2 for the x. That will give us the area under the curve within these limits. But that is not a simple procedure. Therefore, we go for taking the help from the, the distribution called standard normal distribution. This standard normal distribution is nothing but a stand normal distribution having mean as 0 and variance as 1. So in this case, mu is 0 and variance is 1. We are basically uh, transforming our normal distribution into standard normal distribution with a variable z. z is calculated based on the value of random variable, mean of the distribution and variance of the distribution. When we transform x into z, then the equation becomes like this. Earlier it was nothing but this one. But now it has been transformed into this equation. This will become a simple equation because there is only one variable z. There is no mu or sigma. So the equation is simple one. The equation is left with this function as fz. So we can convert any normal distribution into a standard normal distribution for the calculation point of view. Now see here, this is a comparison of two distributions. Now see here, how do we transform normal distribution into standard but x variable is being transformed into z variable having mean as 0 and it's as 1. Here there is some value of mean, some value of variance. Now the important thing over here is the probability for which thing is that the probability for a normal distribution from x1 to x2 for x having in between this which is nothing but this area under the curve will remain same as probability under this curve for z from now in this case z1 is nothing but x1 minus b of one sigma and z2 is x2 minus b of one sigma. That is the process by which we can transform x into z. Now this is standard distribution, standard normal distribution help us to quickly pick up the value of the probabilities of z for cumulative probabilities of z for less than some value of z. Now this probability of z for a particular value of z0, the cumulative probability is nothing but this area under the curve below this particular point on this side. With this area is nothing but probability of z for the value of z less than z0. This value we can pick up from the tables of standard normal distribution. These are the tables of the standard normal distribution where we see this curve and in this
this case the area under the curve on the given side of the z value is given in the table. The value of p for z less than z0, where z0 is this point, will be given over here. If suppose the value of z is z0 is 1.5, then the probability of z less than 1.5 can be picked up from the table where we can see the value of z as 1.5 and for this value we can see the value that comes as 0.93 if suppose we have to find out the probability of z for less than minus 1.5 so how we will see? We will see over here minus 1.5 over here. So this is the row. Now the second digit value is second digit value is 2. So for with respect to 2, second digit value is given over here in the first row. The value is so the probability will be 0 0.6064 on the curve what it will be now this value on the curve will be somewhere here because this point is 0 so this is an area under the curve that is shown over now this value will be on the positive side so that this value will be somewhere over here. So this is some point 1.5 and this will be minus 1.52. So that is the probability which is under the curve which is shown as 0.92 over here. Now this is the procedure in which we can transform any given normal distribution into the standard normal distribution for the calculation point. Calculation becomes simple because we cannot have n number of or infinite number of tables for normal distribution. Therefore we can have only one table for standard normal distribution. And that one table will help all possible combinations of normal distribution because once you transform x into z it become gives us a mean value as 0 and variance as 1 and the table is given as I have shown you the table and I have also shown you how to pick up the cumulative probability for a particular point of the variable in the case of Gaussian distribution. Let's take an example. It will be more clear to both of us. For this problem, what we see here is a normal distribution is given for mean is given as 300 and a standard deviation is given as 50. So for this particular given normal distribution, this is our normal distribution. In our normal distribution, first for the solution point of view, we have to transform, transform into standard normal distribution. When we transform into a standard normal distribution, we will get a distribution identical to this. However, having kind of normality more close to Gaussian distribution, mean as 0, variance as 1. So this is our normal distribution x colon n mu comma sigma square and this is our standard normal distribution or z distribution having variance of variable as z mu as 0 variance as 1. This distribution is supported by the tables. Given that 
mean value and this. What we have to find out? We have to find out the probability of x greater than 360. If we convert into the cumulative probabilities, because that becomes an easy way of solving the problem, to convert all the uh, unknown probability notations into the cumulative probability, so it will be 1 minus probability of getting x less than or equal to 360. There is no question of equal to or uh, less than because it is a continuous random variable. So if mean is 300, this value will be somewhere over here. So this value will be x equal to 360. So what we, what is asked in the problem is this area under the curve. Find out this area under the curve, we can have this area under the curve that is on this side which is this is this one and this area is what we want. Now to solve this problem if we transform into z distribution in that case for this particular point we will have an equivalent z value. That equivalent z value will be somewhere over here z naught and that z naught is equal to 362 minus mu upon sigma. That will become 362 minus 300 divided by 50. That will become 112.4. Sorry, 1 point, 1 point So this term will be equal to 1 minus probability of getting z less than 1.2. So this z0 is nothing but 1.2. This is the point. What we have to find out is basically this area under the curve, but this is only can be obtained 1 minus that area under the curve. So that will be from tables of z distribution we can pick up this value for z 1.2 is this 1.24 second digit value is this so the problem is this the value we get over here is probability of z less than 1.2 is nothing but equal to 0.8925. So in the problem what we get here is 1 minus 0.8925. That will come out to be 5701. So the probability of getting x more than 362 is this area under the curve is 0.1075 this area under the curve is 0.1075 that will be our answer we can also write it as probability of getting x z more than 1.24 is this or that is equal to probability of getting x more than 362 is the same that will become our so this was a simple example of using normal distribution for the calculation point. If we have to find out certain probabilities for a particular continuous random variable, we can take this procedure for applying the standard normal distribution in case of normal distribution. Now I will take another example which will be more practical more useful for the engineer's point of view and then in that also we will follow the same kind of procedure. Let's see that.